Hey, in this video, I'm going to explore a very exciting new AI tool that allows you to turn video files into AI stylized animation, enabling you to quickly turn yourself into an anime, looking pretty cool and authentic with good eyes. Um, and you can go through a process to improve the lip syncing, or you can turn yourself into a 3D character, a computer game character, stylized paper aesthetics. It's really, really cool and very easy. So I'm gonna take you through that process and then explore some more advanced ideas that you could do with that animation to create something a bit more developed. All right, here we go. So the new AI platform providing lots of the magic here is Domo AI, which is relatively new on the scene, but already proving very popular. And it allows you to generate images, animate those images, as well as convert an existing video file into the stylized animation, which is what I want to touch on today. At the moment, it is run via a Discord server, and I'm sure in the future, there will be some cool interface on their website with a fancy UI. But for now, just head over and click Start in Discord. They give you 45 credits for free so you can try out the platform and then they have various tiers. The standard plan seems very good, enabling more credits for fast generations plus unlimited generations in their slower, relaxed mode. And you can sign up to the Discord, check out their contests, go down to their generation rooms, or you can start a private chat. And to do that, go to Direct Messages, click Find and Start a Conversation, search for Domo AI, and choose the bot. And that will load up the chat so you can interact with the Domo AI bot and create your generations. Then go to the chat box, press forward slash, and you're presented with your options. You can choose subscribe to sign up to one of their tiers, use gen and type in a text prompt or add an image reference to create an image, type forward slash settings to flip between fast mode and relax mode, use animate to animate an image, or forward slash video to turn a video into a stylized animation. And I'm going for video and I can click here and upload. And I've got this little clip here I filmed this morning, which has got a bit of camera movement as well. And with that added, you can click on text prompt and describe your scene. And I'm going for bright looking anime ninja enjoying his coffee at night, wearing black and yellow hooded suit. Press enter. You're then presented with a few style options for your generation. So the default is flat anime, there's Japanese anime, live anime, Chinese ink painting, 3D cartoon style, comic style, pixel style, storybook, cartoon, color illustration, Grand Theft game, which gives you that computer game look, paper art style, and Van Gogh style. And for this first one, I'm gonna leave it on the default anime version one. And you can choose if you want the video generation to be more impacted by the video source or that text prompt. For this first one, I'm gonna leave it on the video source, and you can choose between three, five, and 10 second generations. And press start. And if you run out of credits, you can purchase more or flip over to relax mode if you're on that standard tier. I'm also going to run a generation which refers to the text prompt more than the video source, which should give us more of a visual that shows that ninja and that black and yellow hooded suit text prompt as well. And I'm going to generate two more using the storybook cartoon style, again using the video source more and the text prompt more. And there we have those generations completed and we can click and preview the output. Up too late playing with AI? Have a coffee. Cheers. So this was that standard anime export and I think it's done a really good job. It does struggle when I'm further back in the shot and there's less definition, less detail, worse lighting and it's struggling with the arms and hands. But as I get closer to the camera and the lighting improves, there's more definition and it does a much better job. And I shot this footage with the front facing camera on my iPhone, so it's not the best quality. You could add a posterized time effect in Adobe After Effects or Premiere, drop the frame rate down to 8, 10, 12 frames per second, and it can give you a more authentic, lower frame rate anime animation feel. And in the second anime generation where there is more weight given to the text prompt, the overall look of the scene and the style of the character is much more in line. We've got that yellow and black jumpsuit, very impressive. It does get a little bit confused on the closer up shot, but you can see how leaning towards the text prompt more than the video source has a definite impact. And then we have the two storybook generations. Again, the first one, it's more in line with the original source material, but it's really nice quality output. And it's got a slight anime 3D hint to that style, but I really like the close up. I think it looks pretty cool. And I'll share a method for improving the lip syncing on these animations once generated later on. And the other storybook style generation where more weight was given to the text prompt Again, the overall scene looks very different. It stylized the character. We've got that yellow and black jumpsuit. And yes, the character morphs quite a lot, but once we get to that close up again, there's more consistency and he looks pretty cool, albeit a little bit creepy. The generations come out at 1280 by 720. So you could use something like Topaz Video AI 
and this enables you to upscale your footage. You can go up to output resolution, choose up to 8K. I'm gonna go for 4K. If you wanted to, you could enable slow motion, improve stabilization, try out different models for the upscaling. Proteus does a decent job and then press export. And I'm on a well spec M2 Mac here and it takes about one minute to upscale a 10 second clip. I'll include an affiliate link to it in the description below. It is a paid tool, but it's really very, very good and does a fantastic job using AI to upscale content, enabling slow-mo and things like that. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the basic part of this tutorial where I've shown how you can easily use Domo AI to apply these cool art styles to turn video clips into stylized animation. And it does a really, really decent job and it's nice and quick and easy. And of course, you don't just have to do character scenes. You could use footage of environments, basic rendered 3D scenes, abstract art, anything and run with it and produce some really cool content. In the next part of the video, I'm gonna look at improving the lip syncing on those character animations and then various other AI tools to be able to bring it all into After Effects and do some cool compositing that might open up some other future ideas for producing bigger and better projects. Before I jump into the advanced section of the video, I just wanted to say if you are interested in videos around AI animation workflows, trying out different tools and finding ways to be able to use the tools with more traditional digital animation techniques, please press subscribe, like, etc., etc. And also, if you are an app developer creating high quality AI animation related apps, image generation apps, I've now got a new directory at AIanimation.com where there's different bits of AI animation software featured. And if you're a developer, a company behind the software, you can submit listings and there are free and paid tiers so you can be featured on one of the top ranking AI animation related websites. Plus help Animation Creative discover some new cool tools. You can register as a creative on the site and join the community of over 2,500 AI animators and creatives. You can build a portfolio, add videos, and hopefully find work in the future. All right, back to the video. Okay, so into the more advanced part, and I want to be able to separate our character from the background. And if you don't have a green screen to hand, you can use something like Runway ML's Remove Background. So logging into Runway ML, click on Remove Background. You can upload a new clip by pressing Upload up here. I've got one to hand already, so I'm gonna drag that in. Give it a moment to process. You can then click on the subject of your scene that you want to remove from the background. And with a few clicks, it's already done it. You can also use the exclude button and add any areas you don't want included. And then once you're happy, you can go ahead and press export. And I've got a standard account and I can download a 4K resolution and press export mask. You can also tick export mat and download that as well. You can then press go to export, wait for your exports to complete. And then you can go down to the list here press the three dots and download your clip. And then back in Domo AI on Discord, chat into the bot, I type forward slash, choose video, add that footage with the green screen downloaded from Runway ML, add a text prompt, geeky teenage male with oversized black frame glasses, big blue eyes, green background, and press enter. I'm then going to select that storybook cartoon look again, as I quite like the output, select 10 seconds, and I'm gonna keep it on refer to source video more and press start. Whilst I wait for Domo AI to complete that generation, I'm gonna go ahead and use another AI tool to create a background, which will then turn into a 3D model that we can take into Adobe After Effects. Whilst my normal go-to for AI image generation is mid-journey, for this one, I'm gonna give Dali 3 a go as well. So into ChatGPT and write out a text prompt and press enter. You could of course use one of the many other AI image generation platforms, including Domo AI or mid-journey or a stable diffusion option, and this is our initial image. It's not exactly what I envisioned, but let's go with this. I'm then gonna use Zoe Depth on Hugging Face and you want to use the one by Sharik Farouk. And if you search for Zoe Depth on Google, it should come up near the top. And you can use this for free, switch over to image to 3D and add the environment image. Then tick keep occlusion edges and press submit. And this just takes a couple of seconds to generate your mesh and you can press download. I'm then going to use Adobe After Effects, which is part of the Adobe Creative Suite, and I'm using the latest version at the moment, which is 24.1, and this includes the new GLB 3D file format support. So I'm gonna go ahead and press File, and Import, and import the file downloaded from Zoe Depp. I'm also going to create a 4K composition at 30 frames per second, and drag our GLB file onto that composition. Press OK, click on the layer and press R, and rotate 180 degrees, and we have our 3D file and you can cycle through the camera controls and see the 3D file in all its glory, ready for adding our character into the scene. And hopping back into Domo AI and it's completed our earlier generation, looking very cool and kind of illustrated and 3D, 
but those lips are not matching the audio. So let's try and fix that. Heading over to thinklabs.so, which is a very cool new lip syncing tool on the market. Go ahead and press launch app. And they now have two models available. There's sync one and sync 1.5. 1.5 works really well with characters speaking directly to the camera and they've reduced some of the flickering and improved the blending with the original footage and Sync 1 still very good and works a little bit better with angles when it's a side on profile. But I'm going to go ahead and upload this video file from Domo AI plus a separate MP3 file of the audio we want to use for our lip syncing. And I'm going to select their 1.5 beta version and press submit. And I find it takes about one to three minutes to complete a short generation like this. Thanks for watching. Please press like and subscribe and leave any comments. Plus head over to AIanimation.com to check out the new AI animation app directory. Cheers. And there's some flickering, so I might try the version one model as well um, or run the generation a couple of times. But once you're happy, go ahead, press the button here and press download. I can then upscale that clip using Topaz Video AI, import that file into Adobe After Effects, drag it down onto our timeline, right click, go effects, keying, key light and color pick our screen color. And you can play around with the screen gain until you get a result you're happy with. Alternatively, you could take the clip back into Runway ML and use the green screen removal there and download the matte, which would apply a nice mask to your footage and you wouldn't have to crop out these eyes separately as the eyes are being slightly affected by the key light as well. But since we're here, I'm just gonna quickly draw a mask around our eyes. Press M and quickly set some keyframes, moving a mask around where the eyes are. Click that layer and press Command D or Control D to duplicate the layer. And then one on top, we're gonna to remove that key light effect so we're not keying out any of the color on those eyes. And then on the one below, I'm just gonna press M again to bring out the mask and delete the mask. And now we have our keyed character here. And then click on both of these layers, press Command Shift C or Control Shift C to pre-comp the layer, call it character. So those masked eyes and the character are on the single layer and we can make this layer 3D. Press P to bring up the position controls and increase that Z position so we can see them moving through the 3D mesh and then press S, scale them down. You can also use the controls in the window. We can then right click, go new, create a 3D camera. And I'm going to make a 50 mil camera, press okay. And then in our preview window, we can press C to cycle through the camera controls and move the camera to find a position we like. And you can see how we could set keyframes to move our camera around. Next, I want to show you how you could use AI to help make a HDR map that you can use to help light the scene inside of After Effects. To do this, I'm going to use an amazing tool from Blockade Labs, which you'll find at blockadelabs.com and go ahead and log in. I have currently got the basic paid account for this, so I can create and download HDR images. And it lets you generate an environment based on a text prompt so to create something similar to our 3D mesh, I'm gonna use that same prompt again. Very long futuristic corridor on board a sci-fi space station, gray metal panels with neon pink lights glowing, porthole windows showing nebula outside, shadows, dynamic angle, dynamic lighting. We can get rid of dynamic angle. Dynamic lighting, a 3D Pixar animation style. You could probably get rid of that as well as we're gonna go here and select an art style. And I'm gonna go for the render settings and choose Stylize CGI realism and press generate. And we have our 360 image. So whilst it's not identical to the one we've generated in DALI 3, it has got a similar set of tones and lighting and that will certainly do the job. And it's really quite an incredible tool. And depending on your tier, you can then also download different versions of the image. You can create a video file that rotates around the environment, the HDR map, which we're going to use and then other different files, a depth map. Or if you're on a higher tier, you can download their 3D mesh, which will create a kind of 3D sphere with the image applied. But for today, I'm going to download that HDR image. I've then jumped back into Adobe After Effects and brought that HDR image in, and I can drag that down to our timeline. We can hide it, and then right click and press New, create a light, change the light type to environment. You can then drop down the light settings, go to light options, source, and change it from default to that HDR image. And it instantly updates the lighting in our scene, affecting both that 3D mesh and our 2D character. And whilst he's just a 2D plane with that image applied, it's still affected by the HDR lighting. You will find it probably slows down your machine quite a lot once you start using the HDR lighting, but it instantly helps set them in the same environment 
as your 3D scene. Pretty bloody cool. Whilst you're refining the scene, adding animation and things like that, you can go ahead and disable the environment light and your scene will move around much more freely. Just remember to turn it back on before you refine the overall look and do the final render. You might not be able to see this on YouTube, but I'm getting a slight halo around the side of our character where that green screen wasn't perfect after it had been through Domo AI. And whilst I can get rid of it by tweaking the settings in our key light effect, it then starts impacting some of the colors in the shirt. So instead of that, I'm gonna use Runway ML's background remover again and just put this clip through so I can download that black and white matte file and apply that in After Effects and get a nice crisp outline. So then in After Effects, I can bring down that black and white clip. We can hide it, go down to our bottom layer in our character pre-comp, go over to track matte, choose that green screen and flip through the toggle here till you get to the mode that you need. And I can also click effects and re-enable that key light. And we now have a nice crisp edge to our character without any of that subtle halo. So we're getting closer and I just want to add a couple of more extra touches before we wrap. The character and the scene are currently completely in focus and it'd be nice to have a bit more separation between the two. So I'm going to right click, press new and choose adjustment layer, call it blur, then right click, go effects, blur, Gaussian blur and up this, up it to 20 and I'm going to position it between our character and that 3D model layer and now we have a bit more separation. And then with that blur layer selected, I'm going to double click on the square rectangle tool to create a square mask. Double tap M to bring up the mask settings, ramp up the feathering, reduce the mask expansion. So the blur has more impact in the middle of the image and fades out towards the edges, which suits this scene perfectly, giving us a fake depth of field effect, as the depth of field effect is greyed out when you're using a 3D GLB file in this scene at the moment. Whilst looking at this scene, I thought it would be really cool if we could have animation going on outside these windows separate from this 3D mesh. So I've actually jumped into Photoshop with our original image from Dali 3, added a green fill into each of those windows, dropped it back into Zoe Depth 3D to remake the GLB mesh, brought it into After Effects and replaced the mesh. So now I have this instead, and I want to key out the windows in our scene. But as it's a GLB file, if you right click and go effects, they're all greyed out. So what you need to do is pre-comp this whole scene. So I'm going to actually select everything, press Command D to duplicate, move those up to the top, select the ones at the bottom and press Command Shift C or Control Shift C to pre-comp, call this background. And we can hide the 3D file here. We don't need to worry about that one. Double click to open up the background pre-comp. I can position this over here, drop down the camera controls and do the same on our main comp. And then using the pick whip tool, I'm going to link our camera to the appropriate setting. So using pick whip, point of interest, position, and go through all of these. And I can hide the character in that background pre-comp. And for now, I can close the background. And now when you press C and move the camera around in here, it's actually moving the camera around in that background pre-comp as well. But as that background is pre-comped, you can now right click, choose effects, choose keying, key light, and select that green color. So the windows are now keyed out. I then want to add a sci-fi background to our environment outside of those windows. And you could find some stock footage, generate something using Runway ML, Pika Labs, Domo AI. But I'm actually gonna try out that Blockade Labs 3D image export. So I've generated this sci-fi nebula, upgraded my account so I can download that 3D model and brought in a new GLB file with that 3D mesh applied. When you drop that 3D file onto a timeline in After Effects, you'll see it is actually a 3D sphere with the image applied and it's been distorted based on the settings you go through during the exports. And you can zoom inside it, press R, rotate around the image. So jumping back to my main composition, I can grab hold of that 3D file, drag it down, drop it below our background layer and press S, to scale it up, solo it so I can see what we're looking at. Press R and rotate to a more interesting part of the image. And then when I rotate the camera, we have the movement of our 3D background and that 3D space environment. And there's a nice bit of parallax with that scaled up space scene. And I can still enable that environment light to help tie it all together. Right, I'm gonna quickly go through and set some camera moves, maybe add some other motion graphic touches and then render out the final sequence. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Please press like and subscribe and leave any comments. Plus head over to AIanimation.com to check out the new AI Animation app directory. Cheers.